Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Today I am absolutely excited and very ecstatic to interview the guest that I have for you today because he's got a lot of information to share and he is just so on the move. You're going to want to know everything that he's doing and stay on top of it because I will tell you consistency pays off and this is the one, the man that's doing it. He is author of Overcoming the Silent Pride Within, Dare to Compare. We're going to talk about that today, as well as he is an actor, a director, a producer, and he resides in Dallas, Texas. Not too far from me, but it's still a little ways. He's got 21 credits to his name, and he is known, yes, he is known as a true chameleon actor because he has the ability to bring forth just about any emotion. We might even ask him a little bit about this today, but he's also known for his lead role in The Place in Between, and he has been a star in the short film Harvest. There's a lot to him. You're going to absolutely love it. I'm so excited. But what took him to have this journey in the entertainment industry was because he was a Southern Baptist pastor's kid. And so there is a lot that we can glean from that information too, but he took all of the things that he's learned, held it dearly within and moved it towards reaching his goals and his calling because he really feels strong that God has called him to go into this field and allow that passion that he has to inspire and move others in ways that, well, is least expected. He's going to also talk with us today about a script that he has. There's more to this script. I'm going to let him divulge all of the information about it, but it's Preemptive Strike Beyond Sight. So welcome to the show, Nicholas Rice. Thank you. It's good to be here. I'm absolutely jazzed to have you on the show. I've been waiting to have you for quite some time, and you have got a lot going on, especially with the new release of your book. And before we get into all of this, I know everybody's going, okay, so he goes from a Southern Baptist pastor's child and he is doing things now in the entertainment industry and in entertainment, there's always a lot of mm, sort of questionable things that can be happening. So can you tell us a little bit about your background in coming into the industry? Well, um, a previous podcast that I was on, I, I had to explain that even though I was in ministry, uh, I, I grew up a pastor's kid, but I was in ministry as a worship leader. And worship leading can actually be a big performance. Uh, not saying that that was the goal, but you, just, you definitely had to get your vocals right. You had to get your instrumentals right and uh, doing this in front of a big crowd. So there was an entertainment aspect to it. And going from that into acting, it, it helped me transition for say the preparation of a role or something of that nature. So I, I had some background in that, but I will say this going from ministry to acting was a complete culture shock uh, in a good way, in a good way. I, I wrote the book on pride and I can tell you this right now that the most humbling experience that I've been able to experience is getting in front of the camera on set because you have to strip down literally everything who you are and become something or someone else. And so that was, um, that, that was a humbling experience for me, you know, having to just leave it all out there. <laughs> I love it though, because it's really interesting when you look at a lot of very famous uh, recording artists or entertainers, actors that have come and made just this huge fame. They were led specifically from their Christian roots or from mm. church, yeah. being in church, being in choir, being part of the worship team. So I really love how you've embraced that and allowed the Lord to direct the direction, direct direction that you're going, <laughs> you know? Um, I do. I think it's, I think it's really neat. And you've had a really good base on what you see needs to be done and what you want to convey. And it's, it's very immense. And your social media post for those that are following and those who need to follow are really going to be able to see it. It's really, really clear. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's been a, a great journey. Uh, it's been a short journey. Actually, I've only been acting for about three years now. I just hit my three year mark back in August and 
I'm loving every minute of it. I still have a lot of goals to hit and I'm, I firmly believe that I'm going to hit all those goals. Uh, it just takes one day of preparation at a time. So. I love it. I love it. So you went, what was your first role? Your first audition? That That's actually a really good story on its own because my first audition was for a commercial print job for Toyota Tundra. And it was my first audition, my first big gig. And if you don't know the the statistics for when it becomes being an actor, you probably go to about 30 to 50 auditions before you land one role. Uh, and that was my first audition and I landed it. And I was ecstatic because I got to work. It was my first experience in the industry. Um, a friend of mine messaged me after I made the post saying I got the job. She said, Nick, you have an anointing on your life because no one lands their first role. That's just not something that happens. And so I believe getting that first role, I believe that was God kind of giving me a taste of what he's called me to and how much I was going to love it. Uh, because that, that first gig was amazing. I literally got paid to play. Uh, okay. I mean, I was, I was pampered. I, it was like $100 an hour. It was like easy money. Got to drive a you know, truck all the time, you know, fake <laughs> fishing, you know, fake playing with my fake son and got to drive ATVs all day. It was, it was just a day of fun. Got paid mm -hmm. to have a day of fun. And then those pictures, because it was a print job, so it was just still pictures, those pictures ended up in the Toyota Center where the Rockets play uh, in the VIP lounge. And I didn't know that because it's hard to find the final product. But How awesome a is friend that? Of mine, yeah, a friend of mine was uh, entertaining some clients in the VIP lounge, and he saw my face just like plastered on the wall. And so he took a picture of it, posted it on Facebook and tagged me. He's like, Nick, I think this is your face. And I was like, that is 100% my face. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, it was, it was a good, you know, the whole completion of it and to see the final product, it was, uh, it felt really good. And so I didn't land all of my roles after that. Uh, you know, I went through several auditions before I landed my next role, but I think that was God just kind of giving me a taste. Like, let's, let's just, just, just taste it. You know, and you'll see how good this is going to be. Well, you just had a little commercial yeah. out and I, it, it's really an exciting, it's not little, it's a big commercial. It's, but I mean, it is just, it's such a neat commercial because you just <laughs> nail it at the very end uh. and it looks so, it just looks so natural that, that I don't know if you planned it that way or if that was called <laughs> in the script or however, but whatever, it just, that just really you know, brought it home because well, everybody gets it. Yeah. And I, I was getting a lot of feedback when it comes to people saying, I, this is my life right now or something of that nature. And the story of that commercial is one all on its own. Uh, I was a last minute cast or casting for that commercial. The guy they had backed out at the last minute. And so they called me last minute. And one of the, the, the girl who played my wife, she's somebody I've acted with before. She's in my same acting class. And so we have a good chemistry together. They called her as well. Uh, the next night we came together, it was like a four hour shoot and uh, they had a script. We memorized it on spot. They made me go get the wardrobe at Target. And so it, it was a, it was a cool shoot. Uh, but that whole like head whip thing, uh, yes. that was all me. They, they didn't tell me to do that. I, I just <laughs> felt like that was natural because I'm a, I'm agitated that I just put this baby down and now it's all woke up because of the freaking garage door. So yes, they, yes. Uh, and I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of people, that's, that's what they love. They like, man, that head whip, that really communicates exactly what you're trying to say. And I'm like, well, I'm just thankful that the director allowed me to have some artistic input. <laughs> yes. And you're going to so, end up being known for the actor with the head whip. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally cool with that. I wish it was a national commercial because that would be so much better, but it's just a regional commercial. So I think right now it's just airing in Houston. I love it. For those of you who uh, have not connected um, with Nicholas on his social media, you have got to connect with him. We're going to give you all Please. of the, yes, we're going to give you all the details because you've got to see the things that he is putting out. It's <laughs> absolutely great. And I don't want to share any more with that because I want them to go see it. And so real quick, I'm going to talk to you more, but I do want the viewers and those who are listening also on audio to get the social media links real quick before we go any further, because they might want to be checking this out. Okay. Uh, well, if you want to find me on Instagram, it's uh, at the Nicholas Rice, Nicholas with a N I C H, not a N I C K. Uh, and then that's the same thing for Twitter. And then if you want to find me on YouTube or TikTok, it's my full name, Nicholas Andrew Rice. If you search those terms, it should pop right up. 
I, I absolutely love it. Okay, so now there's more. You've got a whole lot more going on too besides those. And you are just, your journey is awesome. But let's talk for a minute before we, before we go into a script per se, let's talk about your book launch. Okay. Um, well, uh, this book I was writing, I was writing this book before I actually became an actor, uh, but I finished it during the lockdown. And so I've been writing it for about five years. Uh, it sparked whenever I was in ministry. And uh, if you want to talk about sin, like what are you doing whenever you're choosing to sin, you're choosing yourself. And so the story or the subject of pride is a hard one to fathom. Uh, probably the reason why my book's not doing so hot is because people don't want to read about that when it comes to themselves. Uh, we have so to be accountable. <laughs> I, it, it, yeah. And so, I mean, I can uh, firmly admit that I'm a prideful man and I need those principles to keep myself humble and accountable. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's, it, it was a hard book to write, but it, it definitely came down to let's just do this because no one wants to write about the ugly sister. They just want to write about humility and being right. humble and stuff like that, but they don't want to write about pride. And so I, I took it, I made a questionnaire, I sent it out to, you know, ministers and non-ministers alike and uh, people of all sorts just to get their intake on these specific questions of uh, selfish pride. And so I'm not saying that all pride is bad, but, you know, when you think about it, pride is thinking of oneself as higher than most others. And that's exactly what we need to try to combat. So I have to agree with you. I mean, this, we have become a world of selfies and self, oh, yeah. self, self. So yeah. a lot of times we don't equate that that has to do with pride and how that um, can create other sin too. So I like what you're, yeah. what you're doing with your book. And I would like to see that that gets out there and in the hands of everybody, because we do need to take a look at of ourself, at ourselves and I want to share too, so we may have viewers and those um, that are listening in via the other platforms that may not come from a Christian background or uh, from a spiritual background. And I want to say that this is still a very important that you get your hands on a copy of this and read what you know, Nicholas has written because there's a lot of really substantial information that's going to make a significant change for you regardless yeah. of that. And it would be great if you were touched also um, by the Holy Spirit that way. But for right now, if you're not at that place, that's okay. You still need to get a copy of this and see well, how you can you flourish from that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I actually wrote the book for non- Christians and Christians. Like I wrote it to be able to uh, lead a humble life down each path. Uh, now I do. Uh, and that's where the tagline dare to compare comes from is that at the very end, I basically say, I dare you to compare a life of humility with Christ and a life of humility without Christ, but you can achieve a life of humility down each path. It's just far much better. Agree. With Christ in it. So I absolutely <laughs> agree with you. A hundred percent agree with yeah. you. I just want to make sure that those who are listening can embrace that because there's so much growth, so much personal growth and so much change. And if there's points in your life where you have not been as content as you would like it to be or as happy and joyous, this can make a lot of difference. And the, I agree. Are, yeah. These are the tools that I want to make sure that the audience has an opportunity to get their hands on. Now, can they get your book on Amazon? Are, are you doing book signings? I, absolutely. Uh, if you want to, um, Amazon is a great place to do it because it, it gives you print on demand. Uh, I don't really like Amazon because they take like 60% of my profits, which I think is a total crock. I know, but, I know. <laughs> but uh, if you want to, um, should I give my email for my PayPal and they can just PayPal it to me and I can ship it myself? If you're okay or, with that, yes. And I'm okay with that. You'll sign a copy for them also? Uh, yeah, and all they have to do is just in, in the memo side, just just write book and then your name, and I'll sign the copy and send it to them. Of course, I need the address as well. But um, if you want to send it to my PayPal, it's going to be uh, my PayPal email account is jcfreak82, uh, exactly it. how it sounds, at gmail.com. And if you just send, uh, I would say 15 bucks, uh, and send the 15 bucks to my PayPal account. Uh, you can also send it via Zelle uh, for that same email address, okay. uh, and I'll be able to get it that way. 
and uh, just make sure you put in the memo all your information that I need, your name, your, and your address would be best. Uh, so if you put your name and your address, that way I can ship it to you. Uh, I'll get it straight out. So I'd rather do it that way. That way I can sign it and also not have to give, you know, half of the profits. To, it's true. And the <laughs> right, royalties are just very insignificant. I think, you know, when yeah. I sell something on Amazon, it's, you know, less than a couple of dollars or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's, royalties. It's, it's not ridiculous. very ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I'm really excited that you have that tool available because it is so needed and especially with the times that we're living in right now and you have time to read. So for those of you who are on lockdown and you don't have anything to do, this is a great read. You're also going to be able to share that with your friends and your family because we all want to move forward. And when someone is grow, they want to grow too. What, what's in you? I want, I want, you know, so this is going to be something pretty exciting now too. Let's talk about a script that you, that you're working on. And I don't want to share all the little tidbits that you have about it, but this, this is pretty excited. The preemptive strike beyond sight, because there's more to it than just the script script. Can you share with us a little bit about that also? Sure. Yeah. I actually, whenever I finished writing my book, that's whenever I actually started writing the script because, you know, we all had plenty of time (laughs) during the lockdown. Uh, And so I was like, I had this thought of this movie last year, whenever I was doing a different shoot, uh, I was doing a fan film last year for uh, Marvel and Star Wars and uh, just had a dream. I had a dream about this specific script and I had a dream about a certain scene that we wrote into the script and it was about a new type of superhero. And I loved what I saw in my dream. And then I was like, I've got to put this down on paper. So whenever the lockdown happened, I had a lot of encouragement from people around me had no idea how to write a script. So I just did what I know how to do best. And that's just to sit down and write it. And so I don't know if you know anything about scripts, but they usually for full feature films, they're usually about 90 to 110 pages. My first draft was 65 pages. Oh, no kidding. Not long at all. (laughs) So (laughs) So, you're thinking, okay, what do I need to do here? Yeah, yeah. And the great thing is is I I reached out to one of my co, um, well, she's my co-writer now but she's one of my classmates in acting class, but she's also one of the substitute teachers because my acting teacher is actually an A-list actor who resides in the area. His name is Glenn Morshower. Uh, He's been on a lot of stuff. He's currently on the resident right now as a recurring role. Uh, And she, my co-writer is his substitute teacher whenever he can't be there. So I reached out to her and I love her to death. She's like the most talented actress I've ever seen in my life. And I said, Hey, can you just read over this? And she's like, yeah. And so she read over it and basically sent me a, a note back saying, you have way too many narratives. Okay. What that means is I was putting too much in the description of the scene and not enough in the dialogue. She's like, you need to let the actors tell this story. And right, I was right, like, right. okay, okay. And so that was the first little snippet. So I went back and as soon as I made all those corrections, I got it to about 90 pages. Uh, and then while I was doing that, while I was working at the gym, a client comes in with a friend. That friend just happens to be a WGA writer. Uh, And he also teaches at the local conservatory here in Dallas, uh, KD Conservatory, for writing scripts. And he has a movie out that he's making royalties off of called The Music Within. And I just like, like, dude, can I hire you? And so he, he agreed to read over my first draft. My first draft was absolutely atrocious. He just like riddled it with notes and uh, it was nothing. I had to like prepare myself, you know, prepare my private heart to receive these notes yeah. uh, because it was a lot of correction that needed to happen. But the good things that he said was, Nick, you've got a great story and you've got great characters uh, and we can make something out of this. And I was like, awesome, let's do it. So I invested probably about $1,200 into the script of my own personal money, paying him and also paying my co-writer because she spent hours on hours on Zoom meetings and stuff like that while I was at work and we were just going over the script. She would basically take what I had, she would read it and she would read the dialogue out loud if it didn't make sense and she would change the dialogue. And so it was, I just, it, it's just been an amazing journey. So we, we finally, after I think the 20th revision, we finally have a final draft. And that draft is in the hands of Glenn Morshower uh, my teacher, and he's uh, on the verge of committing. So when he does commit, that's when we'll be able to go out after the bigger money because getting funding for a movie is like a catch-22. So funders don't want to give you money until you have A-list actors attached to it. A-list actors don't want to attach until you have funding. 
That's right. It's a vicious so, cycle. <laughs> yeah. And so, but because Nikki is attached to it and Glenn trusts Nikki and Glenn has done lesser stuff than what we're presenting to him, we have a, a high chance for him to get attached. And my producer said, Nick, I'm not going after the big money until he commits. And so I was like, okay, I'm on it. <laughs> You're on it. I love so, it. <laughs> so uh, we're just waiting Great. for him. To, he, he just got uh, the script in for the next episode of The Resident. And he said he has a really big role in that episode. So he's going to focus on that first. And then after that, he's going to read our script. This is good, though. You have a lot going on with that. And um, golly, <laughs> it just doesn't stop. You just keep striving and setting another goal and going forward. And I absolutely love it. I Thank absolutely you. love it's, it. It's been a, a long, a lot, like a, a lot, a lot of, um, not obstacles, but a lot of things keep coming and I'm just like, okay, let's do that. Okay, let's do that. Uh, but it's been a good journey and a learning journey. Like I now have, know how to write a script mm -hmm. because of all the stuff that I learned. <laughs> that's good though, because that's going to take you into places you may not have expected that you were going to go as well. So yeah. God's opened up this big opportunity, this door of opportunity for you. And it's going to take you in a lot of different directions because you're listening to it and you're following through and you're consistent and you're sharing things that help other people. And so all of these things are truly a blessing for agree. you and for others. And, and that's what's so exciting. So yeah, I agree. I'm really jazzed about all the things that you've got going on. And I want to thank you so much for being with us today. I definitely want you to give out your contact information again, because I would like the audience to connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so if you want to find me on Instagram or on Twitter, it's at the Nicholas Rice, Nicholas spelled with an N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S. And then if you want to find me on TikTok or YouTube, well, you'll, you'll see all my clips and some fun things that we do. It's just spell out my full name, Nicholas Andrew Rice, and it should pop right up for you. I love it. And of course, if you don't find that for some reason, you can contact me and I will get you in contact with him. And I will Absolutely. also be sharing with you when you do that, his book, because I'm going to want you to get a copy of that as well. Thanks for tuning Thank in. You. Thank you so much, Nicholas. I am so jazzed again that you were with us today. <laughs> Thank you. It was good being here. So go ahead, connect with him on social media, connect with me as well. And if you have an idea for a show or you want more information about something, please definitely get in touch with me. I will do anything I can to assist you. I want to thank you for tuning in today. You guys are just a blessing. Make sure you share the episode with all of your friends, your family, everybody you know, and everybody you don't. Thanks for <laughs> tuning in. Oh!